it was a blessing that had come from Durvasa, even without asking and even without seeking. Indra should have had considered himself to be fortunate to receive it, but intoxicated by his arrogance, Indra puts it around the elephant's neck. Durvasa, it does not take long time for Durvasa to be ignited. Inflammable material. Durvasa is angry, infuriated by Indra's act. And Durvasa immediately curses him, saying that may all your Aishwarya, may all your riches, may all your wealth sink into the milky ocean. Everything that was, that was making Indra, the emperor, the king, is immediately lost. Do not just consider this to be a curse which Durvasa has laid on Indra. Please look upon it as something that Indra invited on himself. You could be sitting on the highest position. But if that highest position is going to make you arrogant, if that highest position is going to intoxicate you so much that you lose your humility, that you lose what is called a sadguna, your virtues, then that position has done no good to you. A similar incident occurs in Ramayana. Bharata is given all that kingdom of Ayodhya even without asking. Kaikai has plotted it all. She has arranged it perfectly well that Bharata becomes the emperor, the Chakravarti of Kosala kingdom. And for which Kaikai has got no regrets that even Dashratha dies. Kaikai's excitement is that Bharata is going to become the king, the emperor. Over there in the forest of Chitrakoot, when Bharata arrives along with the entire army of Ayodhya, The flags are seen flying in the air from far off. And the, and the dust which rises because of the chariots and soldiers striding on that forest dusty road. Lakshmana tells Rama that look here, I can see Bharata's flag. I can see the flag of Ayodhya approaching and by the amount of dust that is there, I know he is just not coming alone and it is not one chariot, but thousands of chariots are following Bharata. Thousands of horsemen and foot soldiers are there. Rama, Bharata does not want you to even live happily in this forest. And Rama's answer is, Lakshmana, you have not understood what Bharata is. Bharata is, Bharata cannot be corrupted even if Bharata was to gain the kingdom of heaven. Nothing can rob Bharata of his bhakti, of his devotion, of his humility. Even the kingdom, even the power, even the position Nothing can do that to Bharata. And Sri Rama says that would it be ever possible that a lime which is squeezed into the milky ocean, Kshirasagar, can ever split the ocean, spoil the milk, milky ocean, 
but indra on the other hand you have bharata you have indra on the other hand indra is already arrogant and he just does not disrespect somebody who is whom he can consider as younger junior lesser than him he is challenging durvasa even vishnu does not do it when when durvasa had struck vishnu in his chest kicked vishnu in his chest bhagwan vishnu immediately held his feet and asked sir did my chest hurt your foot my chest is kathora and your feet are your foot is komal delicate did you get a sprain and shall i bring some iodex <laughs> Vishnu also does not, and here is Indra who does it. And when Indra does that, all his wealth, all his kingdom, everything that can be said as to be the splendor, opulence of heaven, sinks into the ocean. Chira Sagar, and here begins your story. This story. where lakshmi is born and i am bringing this to you at this moment because we are all contemplating here we are all sitting over here to invoke mahalakshmi to bring her to churn her out and there goes something in the background without which mahalakshmi does not appear there is a background with which the prakatyam the appearance of lakshmi takes place and here is the background sinking of all the wealth opulence and splendor of the heaven into kshirasagar it drowns suddenly indra who is the king has become a pauper and therefore please don't forget that it does not take time to change positions if our position is going to make us arrogant if our position is going to make us forget our origin then please know we are intoxicated it would have had been a great opportunity for indra to dismount from that elephant and accept the blessing of the sage instead he takes the garland which was gifted to him and throws it around the elephant showing not only disrespect but showing that he does not value what comes from the brahmarshi he does not value it and if you are not going to value that what comes from this sage then please know that you are not even qualified to enjoy the position that you are sitting in you will have to it will be taken away from you all that opulence all the beauty everything that you own everything on which you are be you, you say is your greatness is your bigness all it goes away indra falls at the feet of durvasa again the same sage and durvasa says yes indra it is possible that you can get it there is only one condition and that condition is now since all this wealth has sunk down to the bottom of the milky ocean you will have to churn it to bring it out 
you you know that we churn the buttermilk yogurt to get the butter what you otherwise just put it on the fire the cream that is not clarified butter it is clarified butter only when you have churned and what floats up is the butter indra you will have to do that something which is unmanifest you will have to make it manifest something that is unseen you will have to make it seen and for which there is a tremendous effort involved you will have to do that and indra has lost all the wealth of swarga but mind you in order to get it back it is not indra alone who can do it one person can be responsible for the total disaster but the one person is not responsible for bringing up and building up an of an empire i think in an african tribe they say there is a saying that it takes a whole village to raise a child everybody contributes it is not only one person just not one person it's impossible indra has lost it but indra alone cannot build it now cannot bring it and if indra has to have it indra will have to take the help of every even of the most insignificant person he will have to fall at the feet of the most insignificant person to to say that please help me and it is a good lesson that you learn the value of every person and everyone around if you don't value that what is highest you will have to begin learning from the lowest whom you consider as insignificant also you will have to value the person's presence indra has to request every devata and just not the devatas but even the asuras to help churn the ocean and it is it is not a small swimming pool that they have to churn it is an ocean and for the ocean to be churned you would require equally powerful churning rod mathani what do you call in gujarati walon 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 and in telugu Ah. chinna kadam chila kadam okay i will tell you in sanskrit now you remember <laughs> it is called mathani mm. manthanam means to churn and that what churns the rod with which something is churned is called as mathani okay it's a feminine gender <laughs> there is one very similar word it is manmatha manmatha means the kama deva the cupid the indian cupid is not a cute boy okay i must tell you the cupid is not a small little baby you know without a diaper flying up and throwing arrows the indian cupid kamadeva is quite different he is a robust big man with his consort rati and he is very handsome very beautiful he is called as manmatha manmatha means the one who churns the mind once when he strikes your heart you will be churned in and out manmatha 
So now this milky ocean has to be churned. To cut this long story short, I have got two more minutes maybe. Because I'm supposed to talk every evening only for 30 minutes. The rest of the time I'm supposed to be in Maun. Just these few minutes. And my time is already over because it was 8 to 8.30. Manmatha. Now, Samudra Manthana has to be done for this opulence, for the splendor, the wealth. And which Sampada is this? This is not ordinary Sampada, it is the Swarga Sampada of the heaven. The splendor of the heaven has to be brought back. So now, the rod is, is made from Meru Parvata, the mountain Meru. Don't ask me where the geographical position.